Hey everybody, this is Nick with F4 Outdoors, and with me as always is... David from F4 Outdoors. And today, we're talking fishing. More specifically, we're talking about pouring our own lures today. So, <clears throat> the first thing you're going to have to have is a melting pot, which we have here from Lee. It's got a little nozzle down at the end, at the bottom here. You lift up, and it pours out the, pours out the lead. You can stick your, your mold... right underneath, pour as much as you need in, and drop it off. The problem with this lead pot that I have is that I pour so much at a single time that the bottom plugs up on me uh, almost constantly and it is not as fast as I would like it to be. Very annoying. So what I like to use is a dumpster find. This right here is an old lead pot where telephone technicians would take wires, wrap them together, dip them into the lead, and pull them back out to make the connection. So <clears throat> we're going to let this heat up. The outside's getting nice and hot already, but because there's so much lead in there, it's going to take about an hour or so. So we'll let that we'll let that go. What you're also going to need is a ladle. To dip your lead. So we dip it and we pour it. This is an actual lead pouring ladle. Works pretty well for me. But as I got started, I just took a stick and a spoon and there you have it. Actually when I got started pouring my own jigs, it was a small cast iron pan with a camp stove and these spoons. It worked well, but I can pour anywhere to 3,000 3, jigs, hooks, lures, whatever you want to call it, in a year. So I go really quick with all this. While this is heating up, I take the time personally to get some of my equipment ready. And as you can see here, hopefully the lighting is good. I have an inline spinner that I want to pour today. I have some 164th ounce jigs with a number 8 hook. I also have a 116th ounce jig with an eighth with a number 8 hook. We've got some inline spinners with some some crane swivels all set up and ready to go. And we also have some live jig heads with a number one hook sitting there. Now I'll go ahead and close these. It's always a good idea to oil your hinges before you get going and keep them oiled throughout the day. This inline spinner here has a metal wire. I want to make sure that moves freely. It's always good to go ahead and spray some oil some WD-40 on that, that wire so that it moves freely. We're going to go ahead and do this one. <clears throat> and then this last one would actually be more for Eerie Deeries. And you have to get creative as you put them in because the wires want to fall out on you. You can't just lay them in like a hook. So there's that. Now my trolling sinkers, they have more lead to them, so chances are you're going to get a short shot, which is not enough lead getting into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit it on my, my pot here, on the edge of the pot, and that'll warm up the mold as the lead's warming up. Um, I always like to have two or three molds going at the time. I'll work with one continuously. The problem with the Hilti mold, like you see here, is boy it gets hot when you get a couple hundred done. The handle gets hot, the mold itself gets hot, and when you're dealing with small hooks you're usually burning your fingers. So I'll work on that until it's too hot for me to handle, then I'll move over to a different mold and work on that one and let the original cool off. 
I always like to keep my hooks out where I can see them so I know how much I need to do. These Altoid tins are great for smaller, smaller amounts of hooks or I have my crane swivels in there. Always keep my Altoid tins um, so that I can store my stuff easier. So as you can see we're ready to go. We're just waiting on the lead pot. And as we're doing that, uh, we, like I said, we do a lot of molds. We do a lot of pours during the year, wouldn't you say? Yeah, a lot. And, and we've probably have, we counted close to 21 molds that we do. Anywhere from split shots to sinkers, trolling spoons, regular jigs. Uh, and myself, I believe in organization. So if I can trade places with you. And if our cameraman wants to come through. There's our, there's our molds down at the bottom of my toolbox. And then up in this section, we have uh, some different molds, files, glues, some handles. Um, we have another Altoid tin with some eyelets for some hooks. Up in the drawer above, I have all my hooks, a little bit of paint, uh, forceps. I use the forceps continuously for different paint jobs. Um, I go through a lot of number sixes and eights, but we have twos, two aughts, sixes, ones, one aughts, and so forth. We got some number 12 crane swivels. We got pretty much everything, every hook that we need here. And up top, I have extra Altoid tins. And this is actually where I keep uh, some tubing and some things that are for more for taxidermy, for tanning deer hides and such. Another thing you're going to need, which I forgot, sorry about this, is a good pair of pliers. And we'll show you what those are for in a little bit. The pliers are for pulling on the gates to get the the hooks out and you're also going to need a good set of cutters to cut the gates off. So as we let this warm up we're going to do a few other things right David? Yep. And uh, we'll get back to actually the pouring and the cutting. So stay tuned. Thanks. Okay, now what David's going to do is he's going to stir around the top a little bit and check to see how, how well it is. Ah, it's looking pretty good, Dave, don't you think? Oh, yeah. And what he's also doing here is there's a lot of stuff that we don't need at the top. A lot of impurities in the lead. Yep. So he's going to... Can you have the can over here? He's going to scrape it off. We've got a metal can. And he's going to take some of those impurities off and put them in the can. The can will get hot. The lead still isn't to the right point that we need. That's why it's cooling off in the spoon very quickly. But he's going to take care of those impurities for us. This one going to fall <clears throat> off. And have some of that melt off. He can always take his needle nose pliers and, and pull it off there, stick it in the can, knowing full well that it's it's hot. Starting to go there. In. There we go. There we go. He's going to scrape that off a little bit more. Got all the, get all that bad stuff off so you don't want that in your lead. I'm being very careful because I have got burned and it sucks. <clears throat> the worst problem with doing lead is that sometimes you get splatter. You get splatter coming off of your 
off the pot here or when you're putting uh, your, your gates back in and, and things of that nature. So we're almost ready to start pouring here. Stay tuned. All right, so now we're going to get to pouring. I'm going to take my jigs here, my bowl, and I can pour one cavity at a time. Or I can fill up that ladle and I can do three or four at a time. So then I go over here on my little table, open it up, and that's where you, what you have. As you can see, there's the jig, the hook, the jig. This part here is called the gate. So I'm going to grab it by the gate and pull them out. It's still very hot. Lead's still hot. <clears throat> and then I leave it open and get it ready to start laying the second hooks. But since I'm prepared, I'm going to set that one out of the way. And I'm going to pour my second one. And we're going to go quickly on this. And all you really want on the uh, mold is to have the uh, front part where it, uh, the hook connects Take my pliers. to the lead. That's all you want. Uh, nicely well done. Typically, when we do this, we will do it for our whole entire day. Now this mold is our inline spinner. And we are going to go ahead and pour those one at a time. And before we take them out of the mold, we're going to take our wire here. And we are going to grab it, pull the wire out. And there you go. And as you can see, These are hot, but they came out very poorly. It's all a short shot. So those would go back right into the pot. And with this particular mold, it's going to take me three or four pours of short shots to really heat up this, this mold in this cavity. Okay, so we still have more to do. Round heads, okay. So we're gonna pour them in. Probably got a short shot there. Keep pouring. So we got it all poured. I always pour over the pot so that my runoff as much as possible goes back into the pot. We do have some short shots, but we got some good ones as well. <clears throat> you do this enough, you're gonna find out that you will have short shots or flashing off the sides. We're going to try to do one of our trolling sinkers here. Typically when I pour, I'll pick one type of hook that I want to do, one type of lure that I really want to get done. So in this case I have a thousand number eight hooks. Uh, I would try to get those done quickly or as quickly as possible. I'd, I'd concentrate on that as much as possible. So we're going to get some of the stuff off the top. And actually with heating up the mold we only had one short shot at the end there and that was a quarter ouncer. So there we go. We got those out of the way. Now let's try a, <clears throat> a spinner blade which is way off. I can tell already. Again, I always like to look at my edges when I close them up. Bless you to the cameraman. And there you go. There's our spinner. So, once I get to that point to my lead pot, where my lead pot is relatively low,
I'll come over to my jigs. I'll take my gate cutters here. I'll take the flat side. I'll put it up against the head and cut. And that's the job that I normally do. Cut. Cut. And if it's David's job, we're going to let him finish with those last couple. Go ahead, Dave. Hopefully our cameraman's doing a good job here. Hopefully. Then you take these and you carefully set them back in. I like to use the needle nose pliers so I don't get burned. So I have gotten burned before and it very much sucks. <coughs> these prickled. So as David's gonna finish that up, make sure that when you're pouring lead that you do it in a well ventilated area. We're doing it in the garage. We can open the door. Um, we always try to do this in the springtime or the winter where the uh, weather's cooler out so that you're not sweating over the, the pot here. It gets real hot and it does let off a lot of fumes. Um, <clears throat> question that you guys may have, where do you get your lead? I get my lead through uh, a couple different sources. You can go to Bass Pro, Jan's Netcraft, Cabela's, and you can get lead blanks to pour your lead. Um, I consider this a little bit more than a hobby with the amount that I do. Uh, a hobbyist, you know, if you're just pouring a, a hundred or two hundred, then you can definitely get your lead through those places. I'm pouring thousands of jigs. Uh, I'm a telephone repairman, so everybody that I work with knows that if you work on a lead ca old lead cable, they usually save me the lead for it, and that's what I use for this. So actually, most of my jigs were old telephone lines. Um, another friend of mine, he keeps uh, he knows a roofer. The roofer takes lead from from the old pipes coming out of the roof of the house, and he saves them for me. Uh, my uncle had old lead uh, balancing weights for tires. I just poured a whole bunch of those in there. There's a lot of different jig molds out there that you can use. Usually they run anywhere from $30 to $40. Um, the, Hilt the Hilti molds are nice because they have small handles, small bodies for the most part. Um, after pouring enough, these handles do get hot and uh, a little sore because of the shape of them. Do It molds probably has the most quantity of molds. Their handles are a little bit bigger, but they're wood handles. Um, and usually you can you can hold these onto these a little bit longer. You can pour more with them. Uh, another tip, this is in need of it. On your hinges, which is right here, go ahead and get some WD-40 and spray those down from time to time. And you'll notice that when you do spray them down, and then you go to do a pour, they're going to smoke and stink. But uh, that's all part of making your own fishing lures. And sometimes I like to take the big uh, spoon, put the extra <coughs> lead in it, and put it in so I can put more into the pot at a time. Right. Um, eyewear, safety glasses, you should probably use them. That way you can uh, avoid splatter in your eyes. Uh, I'm old school. I just never never did it. But, uh, and of course, there's a lot of different ways to pour than we do. We're always learning as we go, making lures. Uh, we probably have close to 5,000 lures in our inventory. Oh, yeah. And uh, we'll go ahead and show you guys how to paint, how we paint. There's a lot of different ways to paint as well. Um, vinyls, dips, powders, all kinds of stuff like that. So from all of us here at F4 Outdoors, 